How's it going, everybody? I wanted to give you an after-action report, much like I did last year at Hamvention. Remember last year, we had a lot of difficulties with Meshtastic at any one time. We had 300 nodes plus, uh, all within that little space. It was a quite a huge number of Meshtastic nodes, all things considered. And this year, the Meshtastic team kind of went above and beyond, and they created a specialty firmware for us for Hamvention. It had a cute little ham icon when you started up the ones that have screens. And I got to say, it worked, from my point of view, flawlessly. I had no issues whatsoever in both receiving all the signals of all the different nodes, as well as sending messages, chatting with people. In fact, one time I was sitting in front of Jason Hammerdio 2.0's trailer, and I was just sending messages as fast as I could to see if I could bog down the network. And I had no problem. I will mention, though, that uh, there was some folks that uh, did have a bit of a problem, at least this is my opinion, I don't know if this is uh, true or not, but uh, client mute, I, I highly recommend when you're in a congested environment to set your device to client mute, particularly if you have one of these seed T1000s or like that Muzi works with the small antenna. If you have something that doesn't have like a really efficient antenna, and obviously if you're not at a higher vantage point, you probably just want to be in client mute. What that means is, your your device is not going to be taking in messages over Meshtastic and then retransmitting them. It's just going to capture them, save them locally, and then that's it. If you men if you've heard of a hop idea, you know three hops, seven hops. That's the number of nodes that a Meshtastic message will go through before it dies, right? And a lot of the times, these devices being not that efficient, it's not really good that we're retransmitting over them. Further, your device kind of starts acting like a repeater, right? It's taking in messages and then trying to bounce them off. And if you're in a really dense location like Hamvention, you really don't want a bunch of people all sending and repeating messages over and over on top of each other because you likely already got it the first time, right? Well, there's a couple of numbers that we have here. Uh, there's things like channel utilization. Channel utilization tells you how well a channel or the, the mesh that you're on is doing in you know whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. And we had actually a really decent utilization, I think, for having that many nodes. Basically, if you're under 50%, channel utilization, the meshtastic word from the developers and those involved is that you're pretty good. You're, you're okay. You're, you're, you're doing fine. Your network's going to work. And considering we had over 300 nodes in the fairgrounds for Hamvention, a utilization under 50 is like, from my point of view, very effective. Now, there were a lot of people, I, I did get some feedback from Digital Rancher and, and Jason as well on his uh, Happy Hour live stream, that they were actually a little taken aback by the amount of notifications they were getting. And so they, you know, they didn't have the notifications turned off on their nodes, which led to them getting notified over and over and over and spammed. I went in and I completely turned off my notifications because I knew it was going to be pretty intense. And it, it was. So unless you DM'd me like a direct message, I just would check on it uh, periodically throughout the day just to see how it's going. A comment that Digital Rancher actually made was that he was getting a number of nodes that would fall off the network and then come back on. And he was getting a notification that said, new node found or uh, established a new connection with a node on the network. Now, I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's a feature. I don't know if that's a bug. Uh, from my point of view, I didn't see those because I had the notifications off. I'll pass that along to the Meshtastic team, or maybe they'll watch this. All in all, it worked just fine for me. Now, something that was pretty cool is this little mesh device right here from Seed Studio, the T1000s. They were actually selling those at Hamvention for about 50 bucks, which is a really good deal on a fun little node that's about the size of a credit card. And they were actually flashing it at the show with the Hamvention firmware. And so we got a number of people on the air for Meshtastic the first time that weekend, and it worked out really well for them as well. Beck 5 was there. They were selling nodes, and they too were flashing it for Hamvention. So we had a ton of newbies on the air with Meshtastic, and it worked really well. We were able to coordinate some of the troll pub logistics, reminding people that it was going to start at 5 p.m. on Saturday and to head down to the troll pub. That channel for swaps, that was really useful as well. We saw a number of people that were exchanging information, like, I'm looking for this, and somebody say, hey, I found it. Go check it out. It's at, you know, swap location, blah, blah, blah. And then they went off, and they were able to get cool deals on radio. So it was really effective for those that maybe didn't want to take a lot of time to pour through the swap meets area to have somebody just on the lookout for whatever it was somebody was looking to buy. 
Now, something fun that happened on my way home, I reflashed my node back over to long fast, just a traditional uh, mesh-tastic firmware, and I kind of left it on when I was flying from the fairgrounds or from Cincinnati to Minneapolis. And then from Minneapolis, I had it on flying to LAX. And I actually had a couple of conversations with people. In fact, I was beaconing out my flight number, and there was a Discord group, the Minnesota Mesh Group. Yeah, there's a group. Uh, I'll drop a link in the video description to their to their Discord out of Minneapolis, and they're Mesh enthusiasts, and they actually picked up my beacons. They saw my flight number. They found my flight on ADS-B, and they took pictures of me, <laughs> me, my plane flying along, and I actually had a bit of a conversation with some of the folks there. And then I got a link in the DMs to go check out their Discord. I didn't even know that they had a Discord, right? I didn't even really know that there were Mesh-tastic Discords for specific groups. So cool. And I ended up hopping over there, and I was able to chat with them briefly and show some pictures. And they sent pictures of the messages and that I was able to get out. And over the course of my flight from Minneapolis to LAX, you can see that I actually had a whole ton of nodes pop up and I was able to communicate with some people and you can see as I got closer to Southern California the numbers went right through the roof because Southern California was is just a very very dense mesh location as far as radios go I did take my Lily go T deck the one that I modified this is the first gen that has a uh, 8,000 milliamp hour battery in it and a GPS dongle so that was the primary one that just kind of stayed in my bag but then that third one over there that neon green one that's the new Muzi works what is it T114 from a uh, Helltech it's a it's a new Helltech board so it's not a V3 it's a, it's a new technology and that thing ran all weekend. I got off the plane, I turned both those on, and it ran nonstop. They worked really, really well. Both devices were fantastic. So big shout out to MuziWorks on that new one. I will drop a link in the video description so you can check it out. Very, very good device. And the new screen is, is really, really nice, high contrast. That red node in the middle, I had one just like it that was gray, sent to me from MuziWorks. And I actually hit it at the Troll Pub to give it away to somebody if they were able to find it. And the Poda Power couple found it, so they, they'd never had a mesh before. And that was really cool that we got somebody brand new to mesh, actually now has a MuziWorks that is a WizBlock, a very, very good uh, WizBlock device that uh, I highly recommend. And it's relatively inexpensive. But yeah, between those two in the middle, if you're interested in Meshtastic, those are, are two great options as well. So all in all, Meshtastic was really good. It was really effective. I had a lot of fun talking to people on the Mesh. And uh, Hamvention and Hamfest in general are a great time to use something like Meshtastic because you don't really have to tie up a frequency talking to people, unless you want to, of course. You can take all kinds of traffic at one time because they kind of just all work itself together as long as you have the right mode set. If you want to go back, look at my configuration part of the video to explain that you want to go pretty much as short and fast as possible. I really think that the Meshtastic firmware was outstanding. Having a sub-25 channel utilization is exactly the sweet spot. And with that many nodes, that is a crazy good number. So kudos to the Meshtastic team. I'll have them on a live stream in the future so we can talk about channel utilization and really fine-tuning your Meshtastic devices so that you can get the most effective communication possible. I hope you enjoyed this little after-action report on Meshtastic at Hamvention. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.